so let's take a look at the Gamma Scout itself. This is a Gamma Scout with alert. It means it has an audible click and a warning click if you are going beyond a threshold value of radiation in microsieverts per hour. And um, there's also the basic version that has no audible functions at all. And the online version that continuously sends data to that um, questionable software on a PC. But I think the with alert uh, version is probably the best to get. And as I said, it has a click. So let's see. I can turn it on here. The thing is, um, what I first of all noticed, they have seriously improved those buttons because they sometimes didn't work at all. I know. They're very prominent and very good to touch and stuff. And very easy to touch. They're still a bit slow on response times, as you can see. It's such so it should switch all the time. If I do the Becquerel measurement, oh, that's a bit better. Let's set it to a few hours. I can see the response time is quite slow, but it still works. Put it like this. The buttons are really working good now. As I said, the response time is not that good. But the buttons are working properly. Sometimes on the old Gamma Scout, if you press this button, it will take it as the upper button or whatever, and that wasn't really good. But now it works. And the clicker works. And if I press that once, the battery icon here, I can get the 3.49 volts. It's currently running on. 3.5 is uh, the number range, so I can turn on or off that clicker got to press them quite hard, I noticed, but still it's better than pressing them softly and it gets mistaken for another button. And here you can just see well, the date and time, which is quite correct. And that just always goes back to normal measuring mode. It also shows you the average, if you press that button down here, of the last 24 hours, which is 0.11 microsieverts. Is it? Yeah, it's 0.11 microsieverts. It will never be this low again. It was just that oh, when it was shipped, so yeah. This here, this button um, does, a, does a continuous measurement of the counts for whatever time you want, either in seconds, in minutes, or in hours. As you can see, you can just set it to like 10 seconds. Not calculate, or more like count, the counts for 10 seconds. It's indicated that it's still counting by this blinking icon here. And now it's no longer counting, and we've got seven counts in ten seconds. So that's interesting. We're going back to normal mode. Oh, we've got to press them really hard now. But yeah, that's still better than the old version. And here's also the Bicorel button. That is um, decays per second. And you can see it will calculate for a while. Got exactly one decay per second now. And it will recalculate, same as it recalculates the equivalent does basically, but this time in Bicarel, the case per second instead of uh, the unit microsievert per hour. Here we got a bit of a different reading 1.031 counts per second. Well, that's that. Then um, you've got, as I said, this is just a p PC connection, it doesn't really do much else. And there you've got the protocoling, the logging function, which is pretty good, I think. If you set the Gamma Scout to log um, just the average of seven days, so you're getting a recording time of ten years. Uh, with the one day logging, you're getting a time of two years. One hour logging, you can record. If you log the hourly uh, counts, you can log them for four weeks. And with the 10 minutes, you can still lock them for 4 days. And with 1 minute, you can lock them for 10 hours. So that's kind of good if you want to like, measure the decay of radon on the underdot and the fleets of radon on activated uh, charcoal that you've exposed to some source of radium uh, produced radon or whatever. So I think this is a very good and handy function. As I said, you can just read that out via the USB port, which is down here. 
um, the opening of that cover is not perfectly. I always need a tiny screwdriver to actually open it. Probably if you've got really like uh, feminine long finger hands, maybe you can open it with your fingernails, but I can't. But well, that's not really all that important, I suppose. Everybody's got a screwdriver around, and um, yeah, so that's that's kind of good. The other one here is you can set the alarm threshold, where we'll just begin to click. So I'm setting that down to one microlivot and confirm. And then I'll just walk to a radio active area. And it begins to click once that threshold has been reached. So if you're out hunting for radioactive stuff, you could set it to one microlivot and it would just begin clicking when you're near something radioactive. So that's pretty good, I'd say. But now, oh, I forgot something. One important thing is um, a shield in front. It measures alpha, beta, and gamma radiation in quite a simple way. Um, it has a very thick size of aluminum. That is for the gamma only shield. It has a much thinner slice of aluminum. It is kind of a bit carved here, but well, I guess that's not too bad. Um, for just measuring uh, beta and gamma radiation, so uh, slightly less penetrating radiation. And if you switch it over to alpha, you can actually see this thin mica window of uh, the Giga Miller tube. This very thin, beautiful screen here will leave alpha particles uh, through and into the Giga Miller tube, so they get registered. And that's a, quite a good function of this little tube, of the Giga Miller tube, which is actually um, an LND712 and window alpha beta gamma detector. It's kind of a budget uh, detector, but I suppose it's not bad either, so... Uh, well, you can check it out online, just lndinclusive.com. So, yeah. But now, what's really important is the actual stress test. I recorded videos of my old Gamma Scout that wasn't too bad because it was kind of an old version. I could read quite a lot of radiation still compared to the slightly newer ones that would crash easily. And, uh, well, I just really hope that this Gamma Scout lives up to my high expectations. Let's bring on the sources.